call me things that I, I can't readily see with my own eyes. But it never changes the fact that it is what he said it is. You know, one thing we forget is that when God was doing all his stuff, he didn't ask nobody any questions or didn't even send out a survey sheet or nothing to ask you what you think about it. Because right now it would have me some real long locks like Solomon's son, Absalom. I'd have big, long, black locks right now. But I can't put in a request for that. I, I would have been at least seven foot tall, weighed about 265, long hair. I would have played basketball, and everybody would know my name. But God didn't ask me anything. Matter of fact, it almost like he was telling a joke when he made me. He made me short and bald. Just the opposite of everything I would have dreamed of being. But how many of you know that what God makes, he makes no mistakes with it? Did you know that? Now, you may look at yourself and think you are a mistake, but you're not a mistake. You are a purpose person. Because if God put you here, he had a reason why you're here. Now, I know there's a lot of things we don't understand. I don't understand why God created mosquitoes. Have you, Sister Booker? Do you have a reason why he would? Are you concerned about it like I am? See, I, I, that's a lot of things going on. Why did he even create poison ivory? So if you can't answer those questions, you can't answer why he created you either, right? So why don't we just enjoy the creator as being one he has already created? Why don't we just go ahead and enjoy and believe that when God made you, he knew exactly how many fingers to put on your hand? That's not my message, though. I want to preach real quick. What we will do, we will do, we're going to do the communion downstairs prior to eating, okay? Uh, turn with me in Joshua chapter 3, and I won't keep you long. I always believe every day now, I'm getting excited about just waking up every day. Because I hate to miss the day. I don't want to wake up one day and that day ain't there. Joshua chapter 3, verse 4, and I'm going to be probably as shorter than I've been in a long time. Then again, who knows? Yet, there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it that you may know the way by which you must go. Well, you have not. Everybody say, I ain't. Say, I ain't passed this way before. I ain't been this way before. I know that don't sound like good English, but it feels good saying it. I've never passed this way before. I've never, and you know what I like about this life? If you go on and pass, you ain't got to do it again. But some of us, where we are right now, we've been here again, before. Uh -oh. I said, some of us, where we are right now, we've been here a while, haven't we? we we've been here before. I heard some of y'all say, boy, I can't believe it. Last year, I thought it was going to be all you happy New Year people. I can't wait till we get a new year. And guess what you at, where you at in this new year? You're in the same place you was last year. Up. 
I came to preach to you today just because you came in here where you were last year. You don't have to leave here in that same place. But you got to be willing to take one more step. Because most people just one step away. Just one step away from a real change. One step, that's all. Just one step away from having a complete new life. I know some of you are saying, but I, got, I, I have a new life. I got born again 25 years ago. Think about how stale you are right now because you ain't experienced nothing new since then. I want to make it my life, my life goal is to make sure I don't live no two days just alike. I know I've heard people say this is a new day, a day I ain't never seen before, but yet you try trying to do the same thing you've done in the yesterday. And so you really ain't seeing a new day because you're still where yesterday has brought you to. Precious God, I love you and thank you for what you've already done. Lord, I pray that as they open their Bibles and open their hearts, you might, they might receive from you those things that are necessary right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you be seated. Don't worry about it. I, I, I remember when I was, you know, when I turned 16, I thought I knew everything about the world, life. I ain't going to lie to you. I remember my Aunt Pearl trying to tell me stuff. I told her, hey, you don't understand. When I was 16, I, I really thought I knew everything there was to know about life. Some of y'all saying, well, y'all, something about that chemical imbalance we have, we get to become teenagers and it kind of makes us insane. Everything they was telling me, I told them, you, you, I already know, I know. No, I said, no, you don't know. But I hadn't lived long enough to know the things that I thought I needed to know. I thought I already knew, but I didn't. It's always somewhere in the back of our minds that we kind of got life figured out. Most people get up every day thinking I got it all figured out. And then there comes this episode. That episode shows up that challenges everything you thought you know. It shows up and wipes out everything that you had in your mind planned. Because there's one thing I've learned, you cannot plan for an accident, otherwise it's not an accident. You can't plan the things that can come against your life, you can't make good enough plans to stop it. Also, the Bible does say that in this life, you're going to have some tribulations. And the only plan that you have for those tribulations must be in place before tribulation comes. Most people have planned to live good, but they haven't planned on what happens when bad comes. See, everything has brought you to this place today. Certain things you know up until this point. There are certain things you can relate to up to this point. Many of you right now, I feel that God is trying to introduce you to things that you don't want. What I found out about life is nothing like getting my life like I want it and then change comes. It bothers me to no end trying to readapt. But life is about just that. I know some of y'all been planning on getting old. I didn't plan on getting old. I, I didn't plan on dying young either, though. But say, I never dreamed, man, I'd get this old. 
So the children, if I could have just thought just a second, I wake up one day, I'm getting out of the bed. And you thought I was going to breakfast because of a snap, crackle, and pop. But I didn't realize, man, that I get to, And see, it messes with your head because you don't know how to be old. You think you do, but you don't. Because your mind, see, it messes with you. I'm thinking in my mind of where my mind has been. It's messing with my body. I'm thinking I can play basketball like I used to. Run like I used to. I got on a bicycle because I just know I know how to ride like I used to. Can I tell you, there's a lot of changes happened since the last time I've been on a bicycle. Could I tell you my body went into shock? I need to tell you that my legs tighten up after half a block. I couldn't hardly move my leg. And my mind telling me, you know how to ride. I take the bike back home, put it in the garage. See, there are changes being made for me that I'm not aware of. And yet, I want to live as though I've always lived and always been. Ain't going to happen. I used to stay up all night. Around about 10, sometimes I get real sleepy. Almost have a desire for warm milk and cookies. But here, the challenge we have when it comes to God it's when God brings you to the end so you can start a beginning. One of the hardest thing in God is to end something and start. Most people want a new beginning, but they don't want the old one to end. Nothing will start new until the old has died. With God, that's exactly how he works. He'll bring you to the end of something to show you a new beginning. Oh, hallelujah. See, I remember when I was born, there ain't a few things. I didn't have to know nothing. I had to know not one thing. Born, only I knew, man, if I cried, they fed me. Or they changed me. And I'd be going through them changes. All I knew was milk, crying, and getting changed. Then one day they introduced me to greens and cornbread. What a day. Now I got introduced to new food. I lived on that for a while. Then all of a sudden I got a little bit older. I got introduced to deodorant. I didn't use deodorant when I was six. I didn't even smell when I was six. When I turned about 12 or 13, I had to go get some stuff. I couldn't even stand myself. Everybody said, that was a change. You know what? It was a, a lasting change. I still use the old. I tried to go without it one time. Y'all was looking at me like, what do you think happens when you don't have it on? You know it's nobody want to be around you? 
gets antisocial. When I come out the house, I'm going to smell like I want to be with people. Y'all so quiet right now, man. I know. I'm, I'm going. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So we, we made changes along the way because life dictates change. You're not going to, if you think for one time you're going to remain just like you are right now, you are about as crazy as you want to be. Nothing stays the same. The only thing I know that stays the same, and you don't even want to know that. He says, I am God, and I change not. You see, many people desire for change. There's a lot, I don't think a lot of people in life today is happy with their life. You talk to about 80% of the people today, they can tell you everything wrong with their life and what's not right and how it could be better, everybody. Most people are not happy with their life. They got something wrong with it. And I'm wondering right now, if you had the opportunity to do something today that will change your life forever, would you do it? Well, we might as well quit now. We ain't got no changes in the house, so I know y'all don't want to change. But anyway, would you do something different today than you did yesterday that you might have a change today? See, last Sunday we had church. Some of you were here last Sunday. Right? And many of you left last Sunday, came back this Sunday the same way you left last Sunday. Right? I mean, you, you didn't, it didn't change your last Sunday. So you came back. Knowing us as human beings, we drove the same way. You probably parked in the same parking spot. And you're probably sitting in the same pew. And you're probably saying at the same level of intensity that you did last week. And you came today with the same stuff you got last Sunday. And I hear people saying all the time to me, man, I want to change. I, I want more of God. I don't know how many times we say, I want more of God. I want a closer walk with God. But well, let me ask you something. Are you willing to do something today that you ain't never done before so you can have all that you've been asking for? Well, they tell me, now they tell me, if you keep doing the same thing that you always done, don't be crazy to think you're going to get something different. Guess what you're going to get, Bob? The same stupid stuff you got last week. You can't do the same thing and expect a different outcome. And we got people, I ain't, I'm not talking about people in the streets, I'm talking about Christian people. Who are doing the same thing and getting the same results. I don't believe God called us to get so familiar with where we are right now that he wants you to start right there. I got a feeling God brought us to this place today for a purpose. 
Some of you are here today because you really do want to change. You see where you can make changes. You know it could be better than what it is right now. And you know you need to make it better, but somehow we got to realize today, am I willing to do something today that I've never done before in my life? Because if I'm serious about change, I don't care what it takes for me to change. I remember that lady with the alabaster box. You know, sometimes we grieve ourselves to death over our situations. That woman was miserable. On the surface, you wouldn't have seen it, but she was miserable. She showed up at the house of misery. Now, she could have came in like most of us done today, sung all the songs off the teleprompter up here, whatever you want to call it, had himself a good time clapping her hand, went right along with the whole party. But she came in with a different idea. Boy, I wish to God somebody would have broke in on us today. I wish somebody would have came to church today to break up our little party. Uh -oh. I wish somebody would have came in today and would say, you know what, I did not come here today to sit around and just look at each other, but I came here for a reason. I wish somebody would have come here today with a change in their mind said, I don't care what it takes, I don't care what I have to do, is that I'm not leaving without a change. She broke in so she could break out. And while everybody else was enjoying each other, they're just glad to have Jesus in the house. But she wanted more. She, wanted, she, did, she was not just satisfied with status quo. She didn't want to just go out and say, well, I've been to church today. She didn't want to go out that door that day and be the same like she used to be. She made up her mind, and I think that's one thing you got to get in your mind. If your mind ain't made up, you think can't nothing happen until you get your mind made up for it to happen. When she came in, everybody else doing their thing, she said, but I didn't come here for them. I came here for him. I wouldn't care who is around you. You're not here for them. You are here for him. And there's not one individual sitting beside you that can change you like Jesus can if you let him give him a chance. Bible said that she went in there and broke open that box, broke in and then broke the box open and poured it out. And you understand how many people get it, got up this morning, you felt like nothing. You got up this morning, you, you felt unworthy. You got up this morning and, and you feel embarrassed. You may have got up this morning and felt like a half a person. Oh, hallelujah. But God is here today to give you a change. Up until this point, you've only wanted it, but you didn't want it bad enough. Up until now, that old girl that went in up on Jesus with that alabaster box, church wasn't her thing. You know what you people find out? Church may not be your thing, the world won't be your thing, but I'll tell you what you've got to get. Bypass church today if you want to, but get Jesus on the way out. Make sure you get him. Nothing was working. See, I've been on both sides of this fence. I've been on the best side or the worst side. Uh-oh. I lived on both sides of this fence, and I can tell you right now, there ain't but one that can really make a man change. That's called his name is Jesus. He can fix it. 
The Lord is bringing us a place where we've never been. How can you expect to do something you've never done if you won't get to where you've never been? There's a lot of people today want to see a lot of things in their life, but they won't let God bring them to the place where they want to see it at. There are people telling me they want to see miracles, but you won't let God bring you to one. I used to hear Christian all the time, well, if God is still real, how come he ain't doing miracles? Only one need to see it is you. If I never seen one, I see one every day, I look at myself. I am a miracle. And if you want to see one, most of you with that religious out of God, we need to see more miracles. And you the very one won't let God do one in your life. Better quit, man, because we're supposed to be eating dinner. It's supposed to be a rejoicing time, man. Make the chicken go down better when you feel good about eating it. But I'm just wondering, is that here we are? I used to be all the time talking about what, what I'm trying to do. Quit trying and get in it. Let God be God. Let God be God. Yeah, but you don't know. I, I, I. I I'm on next Sunday. I, I promise you, I'm gonna fast three days, and I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna get it right. No, you're not. No, you're not. You know what's gonna happen? You gonna keep going around this same mountain, over and over and over again. You're gonna come back the next time. You know what you're gonna be saying? Boy, I wish I could make a change. You know what you're gonna be saying next Sunday? I sure wish I could make a change. You're going to be saying two years from now, I wish I could make a change. You know what you need to do today? You need to take a new step. You need to take a brand new step today. You see, that woman, that one man who was at the pool of Bethesda, he wanted to change, but he was looking for a man to help change it. Remember he said, I don't have nobody to help me. Could I tell you all your ther therapists, your psychiatrists cannot change you? Well, I, I'm getting therapy. It ain't changed you. I can give you five seconds with Jesus and you won't need that therapy. Hello? You don't need all that therapy. Man, I, I, you know, in this world, I have never seen everybody want to make you a victim. Everybody. Want to make you turn and look at you and see how poor you are. You are saved. There's nothing poor about you at all. You got the greatest riches of all the world. You got the greater than I am in you. And you're telling me you're a victim? I, I, I'm afraid for you, friend. You know what I am? I am a conqueror. I am more than victorious. I am more than a conqueror. You understand? Don't, don't let nobody tell you that you're less than that. I don't care what's against me. I'm still bigger than that because I can get over it. I got a God that told me, be of good cheer. Get happy, you can start shouting. Every time something come against you, you ought to start shouting. Because you know what? My Jesus told me to tell somebody, I overcame the world. And because I did, guess what you're going to do? Greater is he that's in you. He that is for you is more than all of them. You're not going to get changed because someone picked your brain and you sat down they told you, you know, I sat down one time, they tried to make me feel bad like a latchkey kid and, you know, if your mama went home when you came from school, you probably latchkey and all that. They told me I had probably ADD. Man, I had a mama had a cure for every disease I had. Every one of them. When I couldn't pay attention, <laughs> I 
She had a way of getting your attention and keeping it. So here we are today. They want to tell you all the reason why you can't be victorious. They want to show you all the things that keep you where you are. And you keep going around the same old stuff. I can't get better because they told me this is what I have. I don't care what they told you, you got. You are not under the power of somebody's diagnosis. We read this Bible. The woman with this year of blood. You know why she got healed that day? Because she finally got tired of being sick. And when she got tired of being sick, you know what she done? She took a step she'd never taken before. Play softly, man. Make them think we quit. Chicken smelling good. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Now she could, you know, like we do. You know what we're going to do? We're going to be praying for each other for the next 50 years. Because many of us are not tired of being sick. Matter of fact, we love being sick. We have learned how to adapt to it. Cope with it. This girl, she, she went to every doctor. It wasn't that she didn't, she wanted to change. Let me tell y'all, your money can't buy the change that you want. It ain't going to be your good job to change you. Your money, it might change you, but it won't be for the good. The Bible says she took and spent every dime she had trying to make, get a change. Until she came up to what we call broke. You ever been broke? It does change the way you see things after you get broke. Because as long as I got some money, I'm going to try to buy my change. Man, I used to get depressed. You know where I used to go when I got depressed? To the buffet. I bought me a feel-good meal. It was a happy meal. Man, I, I get depressed. Sister Book and I would go and I'd go out to hometown somewhere I start filling up my shoes feel like I'm filling up my legs my shoes all the way up I'm just eating chicken on top of chicken on top of chicken on top of chicken and for a moment I feel real good but guess what I'm depressed again I couldn't buy enough food. They went out of business. I needed a new cure for this. Some of us in here right now, we need a new beginning today. Because we're tired of being tired of being tired. But we keep doing the same thing to get tired. We're at a place right now where all of a sudden somebody's got to do something a little bit different than you done last time. I know you came. You prayed. Sometimes we ask for the things that we really don't want. God changed me, but then he sends a change, but we don't want that one. Come on, stand with me. I've got to let you go. I'm going to let you go. I was just looking through this book today and I was thinking of all them little simple things in this Bible and asked myself, what is the difference between these people and us? Why is it that some of these people can seem to get through to God and we can't? You ever ask yourself that? I mean, it seemed like all these people that we read about and shout about, they didn't stay in that normal course of things. 
Blind Bartimaeus. He done something that was out of sorts. He was hollering for Jesus when everybody wanted to quit having church. They was still with church. Man, shut up, man. Let him go on so we can go and get some chicken. But instead, you know what he done? He cried out even the more. Everybody around him said, be quiet, be quiet. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Could I tell you that that day was a different day for him? He was willing to do what nobody else in the crowd was willing to do. Wasn't nobody else in that whole crowd crying for mercy. Not a one, but he did. I can go down this book. One with issue of blood. Wasn't nobody crawling but her, but she got it. Now, I'm not saying today that you need a scream. I'm not even suggesting that you got to crawl. But I am making a suggestion to you. Please don't do what you did last Sunday. You got to take another step a little bit farther away from where you were last Sunday. Could you do that? Because if all you done last Sunday was giving three hallelujahs, you might want to give them a little bit more this Sunday. We've got to get out of the habit, get into the relationship of God, and realize that God wants to, us all to change. We, he wants to change me. And not only do he want to change me, but he wants to give me the best change there is. Precious God, I love you. And I truly thank you, dear God, for what you have done in our hearts. I thank you, Lord, for the love you have bestowed upon all of us. I thank you, Lord God, for the mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the grace. And Lord, in this place today, you know, only you can see our struggles. Only you can know our heart. God, I pray that you will send a word to each heart today. Introduce them to real change in their life. God, strengthen each one of us here. And I'm praying that, God, in your presence today, we might find that fullness of joy and those pleasures forevermore. And, Lord, I pray as we will leave from here, but not from you. But, God, I want you to be with us in everything we do today. Let everything we do be an expression of the love of God in our hearts. I'm praying, God, as we give it out, let it be meted back to us again today. In the precious name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Now, God, if there's someone that wants to take that step, please give them grace now to say yes to your will. Give them grace, Lord, right now to stand on your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.